Ladies and gentlemen, today we will gonna model one of my favorite game artworks, probably one of the most iconic items ever, the Bone Shield from Diablo. So, you're a beginner and don't know how to model something? No problem, here's a masterclass on how to model everything in Blender in 20 seconds. Press Shift A to add a mesh, use different select modes. Press S to scale, Ctrl R to make edge loops, E to extrude, G to move, use proportional editing, press R to rotate, here's a beautiful spaceship. <laughs> Chapter 1. The blockout phase. Press Shift A at a reference image, move it on the X axis to adjust the front view, decrease the opacity and move it backwards a little. Duplicate the image, rotate it, and do the same for the side view. I will start off by creating a cylinder and toggle X-ray to see through my mesh. Now use everything you learned in the previous masterclass to simply block out the form of the spine from the side and the front view. With control click you can select whole loops, and as mentioned proportional editing for a smooth movement. And I will mirror the object in the center using Auto Mirror to only work on one side. Auto Mirror is a free must have add on which automatically deletes half of your mesh depending on the origin and mirrors it. You can install it by clicking on Edit, Preferences, Add ons, type Auto and click the check mark. Back to our spine, I will continue to block out the basic form. For the spikes, I will also add a cylinder and add some loop cuts, move it to position and use proportional editing to block out the form from the side view. Continue until all spikes are done. Create another cylinder and mirror it on the spine. Move it to position and, you guessed it, GSSRGGSR until you block out the form. Duplicate and model the rest of the spikes. And another cylinder. Modeling is so easy. Another cylinder. Another cylinder. Another cylinder. Modeling is so easy. Cylinder for the tailbone. Another cylinder. Another cylinder. Another cylinder. For the single bones on the back, I also use the auto mirror to only model one side. Now for the skull, I decided to go with a UV sphere and use sculpt mode to block in the basic form. Turn on X mirroring, pick the grab brush. When you're done, mirror the skull and use the spine as a mirror object again. Sometimes reference images are in a pretty bad quality. I actually only found out now that the upper part is the tailbone and uh, yeah, I had to use Google Pictures to see how a tailbone actually looks. For the Rex I just squeeze a cube for now and block out the leather parts later, since I don't know how the shape of the bones will change. Chapter 2. The Basic Shape Skull we continue with the basic shape skull. In this phase you try to get as close as possible to your final shape using the sculpt mode. I will start with the spine and apply all modifiers by selecting all and click on object, convert, mesh. And use another awesome add-on to combine all parts. Pool tool is a free must-have add-on which can combine multiple meshes. 
It is useful when you block out a shape using simple forms before you remesh it for the sculpting process. But it can also be used to cut holes into your mesh. You can install it by clicking on Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Type Pool and click the track mark. Alright, combine all parts of the spine. And if you never sculpted anything in Blender, no problem. Here's a 20 second masterclass for sculpting in Blender to follow the next phase. Create a new mesh, subdivide it by 5 levels, go to sculpt mode, turn on mirroring, pick a brush and have fun. You can adjust radius, strength and direction of the brush at the top. Start with a low resolution and use the remesh function to increase the resolution with each step. And yes, practice, practice, practice. And watch time-lapse videos of sculpting. There's a link in the video description on my process sculpting this piece. Back to our shield and sculpt mode, you see the warning object has a non-uniform scale. So back to layout mode, press Ctrl A and apply the rotation and scale. Remesh the spine and find a good voxel size. Not this one. This one. You don't need any fancy brushes other YouTubers want to sell you. For this phase you just need the draw brush, draw sharp, smooth brush or hold down shift the bendy brush and the grab brush. Turn on X mirroring, grab a brush, check your reference and sculpt. I would say this is the most important phase as this is how your model will look like later. So take your time and be creative. Don't forget to stick to a low resolution of your mesh. The higher the resolution goes, the harder it is to sculpt the shape. Higher resolutions are only for detail work. As for the other parts, combine them, apply the modifiers and have fun. So, for the skull I accidentally applied the rotation and in order to use mirroring I have to bring it back to its original position. So if you're an idiot like me, rotate it back to its original position, right click, set origin to 3D cursor, right click, geometry to origin, auto mirror it and set the origin to the center of the mass surface. I actually never sculpted a skull, so accept what you get. I cannot really see many details of the skull, so I use Google Pictures again to find other references of skulls. Chapter 3 Final Shape Sculpt I will directly jump into the next phase since I know that my base shape looks awesome. In this phase you sculpt in the final shape that will later be retopologized. And when I say final I really mean final. Changing something later on is really difficult. In this phase I go up with the resolution of the mesh but not too much. If you need more detail on certain parts, there is another way. For example, the teeth, I use dynamic topology with around 800 resolution. Dynamic topology is awesome when there are parts that need more detail to not slow down your system too much. Let's examine what constant detail and the resolution of 50 does. When you use a brush now, the number of vertices changes, so you can sculpt in much more detail. By the way, I'm sculpting with my mouse and not a tablet since I'm much faster in this phase. I use a tablet when I really have to do fine detail. Some useful sculpting key bindings are hold down shift with any brush to smooth and hold down control to invert the brush direction. Continue with the other parts, remesh it to a higher resolution and sculpt. There are two other brushes I often use in this phase. The first one is the scrape brush to flatten out areas, useful when you want to go for a stylist look. 
The second one is the crease brush to make creases or sharp edges by holding down control. As you see, my resolution is still not that high, since my shape is too far away from going into detail. Okay, I'm satisfied with the shape and we'll go into more detail now. For the spikes I will just increase the resolution and smooth it out since there is not much detail. The rag is also easy. I delete the back and the side faces, subdivide it in simple mode with a level of 4 and use the draw brush with a big radius to give it a more interesting shape. And as always, check your reference and adjust your model. Let's now model out the rest of the back side. I use a torus for the metal rings. Bring it to position and adjust the shape. And for the leather I use a plane. Add a solidifier modifier to give it thickness and carefully extrude it around the rings. And use a subdivision modifier to smoothen out the shape. And if I had checked my reference more closely, I would have seen that there are no rings on the left side. <laughs> Idiot. For the leather thread I also use a plane. You can do it also with curves, but I just don't like the handling of curves. Create a plane, move it to position, add a solidifier modifier to give it thickness and extrude and extrude. A useful feature is Snap to face with project individual elements to snap your vertices to the surface. Stay sparse with the number of vertices since this is only the block out of the threads. Another cylinder. Now I use the subdivision modifier to smoothen off the shape of the threads. And my mesh is destroyed. But don't worry, we'll fix it. So why does the subdivision modifier smooth out the shape? The way this modifier works is that it subdivides the edges, adding more vertices and approaching the average form. So if you need sharper edges, just add loop cuts. I will correct my threads now and call it done. The next step will be to retopologize our model in order to sculpt in the final details, because my 5 million dollar CPU cannot handle so many voxels. The best way is to use the multi-resolution modifier on your retopologized mesh, since it uses the GPU which can handle much more vertices. And of course, texturing. 